we're trying to differentiate ourselves and in the process we're all coming out looking the same <laughs> yeah i mean what is it uh i am a we're all unique or something like that yeah just but, like everybody else This video is brought to you by Gamefly. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's show. Welcome to Room 6, a channel dedicated to local and not so local music and the people that make it, including my guests. And my guests today are a Denver based DI Records recording artist, alternative rock band that are influenced by acts like Queens of the Stone Age, Garbage, Susie and the Banshees, Audio Slave, The Cure, and Paramore. Uh, I actually reviewed one of their uh, songs called Strike the Match. That's coming soon. So definitely uh, subscribe if you haven't done that so you won't miss out on that. Self-described as danceable glam rock, please welcome to the channel, The Unsolved. Hey, guys. Hey, Hello. thank you so much for having us. I do have one correction for you, though. Uh, Strike oh. the Match is already out, so people can go and listen to it wherever they stream their music. I know. Oh. Talking in the future. His, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's out. It is out now. Um, and uh, at time of recording, I've written the script. I haven't recorded it yet, but it will post, I promise. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, we have, I believe, half the band here, represented here. Yes. That's right. Cool. Uh, please welcome, or sorry, please uh, introduce, man, geez. please introduce <laughs> yourselves. For those of you that don't know who the Unsolved are, thank you for watching. Please introduce yourselves. Let them know who you are and what you do in the band. Uh, I am Genevieve Peak. I am the singer, songwriter, and sometimes producer. I'm Max Mueller, the guitar player. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I play guitar. Succinct. Succinct. Yeah. Nice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I am Joshua, the host who is uh, finally almost all the way over getting a chest cold. So um, that's why I sound a little bit like Barry White, baby. Oh. Is. All right. Great. So. Number one, why the unsolved? Why is it called that? It's a funny story. It took us a long time to figure out a band name that we could all be happy with. We went through several iterations. There were spreadsheets for this. <laughs> Every band has this adventure, I think, right? Because it's kind of the biggest decision you can make. Yeah. Um, cool. I'll let you take it. Well, we ended up settling on something that was a shared interest for all of us. Uh, and it's kind of a deep cut reference to the film This Is Spinal Tap. Which I think most musicians have some degree of familiarity with, even though you wouldn't make the association association right away. But the scene where they're chronologuing their storied past of drummers, uh, one of them died in a bizarre gardening accident, and the authorities said it was best left unsolved. And we decided to choose that little moment and build our brand around. Ah, it becomes clear. Yes. Uh, I, I was feeling self-conscious there about your whole perfect lighting situation. So uh, there, oh. <laughs> get a little, get a little, uh, little glow up on me here. Um, That's good. Yeah. The joys of of doing this at home. All right. Only Same. Shadows. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, I mean, you see, I have all that, but <laughs> yeah, it doesn't translate cool to this. <laughs> I find it so interesting, right? You know, we're musicians, and we're doing it all ourselves and mm -hmm. so we've had to also become video editors and lighting experts and suddenly we have a basement full of gear that has nothing to do with just writing and making songs uh i don't know what happened trust me i understand uh <laughs> yeah. this is a process that's been four and a half years almost five years in the making actually yeah end of march will be five years and uh it it certainly you look at my earlier earliest videos it's I cringe. In fact, I'm I'm thinking of uh, even doing something like that. Ooh, ooh, and, and that, and really going for it, but not not on this. This is a bit much. Mood lighting. <laughs> choo, choo. Yeah. There we go. Ah, uh, remotes. But um, yeah. So anyway, I digress. We're getting way off the topic here. So number one, strike the matches out now, and. Is there, that's just a single, but is there a new like EP or new album coming that's that's going to be part of soon? Uh, so we are definitely on the single model 
for now. I think we're living in an age of singles. And this is something that is really frustrating, I think, because we we both really love the album as a concept and a structure. So as a single piece of art, I think albums have so much to offer, but I think the way music is consumed right now, singles are so popular. So we are kind of dropping singles serially, if that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know if serially is a word, but... It totally <laughs> makes sense. Um, yeah. Many of the acts that I have on the channel are doing that where it's like, they'll eventually compile it all into a one single thing. But I mean, yeah. who who goes to the store and buys CDs anymore, you know? It's yeah. buying a whole album online is not even a thing really where you're like, but I, I want this one song, which yeah. you, you see kids back in the day, there used to be these things called audio cassettes and you would have a single song on one side that you really wanted. And then there'd be a B side where you might discover some other song you like by that artist, but you came in but to buy that one, that one song. And uh, that's the new, like now the new thing is buying the single, you know, streaming the single or downloading it. Whereas me personally, as someone who reviews music, I enjoy getting a CD because like effort went into that. A and lot. artwork. Yes, yeah. liner notes. Um, lyrics in the liner notes, hugely undervalued in my opinion, especially totally agree. the more guttural you are. I've, I've recorded, I've reviewed a lot of metal songs and the more guttural you are, the more you, I need lyrics to know what the hell you're saying. <laughs> Right. Some of the most beautiful poetry is hidden in black metal lyrics, but oh, yeah. I'm with you on formats. And uh, it's funny enough, Strike the Match actually does have a B-side. We did a song called Invocation of the Muses, which is the partner to Strike the Match. First off, that is such an alternative 90s title. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I love it. You're, you you are like every band we men I mentioned in the intro is like hitting all my nostalgia notes, you know? Yeah. So definitely, yes, I love too. hearing that. <laughs> so, so that's why it's the unsolved. I'm going to yeah. move on to one of my usual interview questions before we get kind of off the beaten track uh, path again. What is your earliest musical influence? And by that, I mean, what is that moment you remember going, I want to do that? Go ahead. Oh, for me, it was listening to garbage. I had. I had their debut album burned on a CD from like one of my uncles and I every cd after that and shirley manson taught me how to sing i love her i love her style i love the look i love the attitude and that band just rocks so i can remember singing those songs with my like walkman cd player and just that was road trips for me just shirley manson all day long so that's a big one and then i think i got into recording in large part because i was listening to Tom Petty's debut album and there's a song called anything that's rock and roll there's a great moment where there are two guitars kind of panned very far left and right and they're having this really interesting conversation during a solo and I was just thinking to myself man I would love to make music like this that comes alive in a recording so um yeah those were kind of my two moments what was it for you Max uh yeah I would Probably point two. I grew up around classic rock. Um, I was always playing in the house in the car everywhere. And it was always like I was kind of enjoyed it. I was familiar with a lot of the songs, but it didn't really especially grab me. I'd been playing trumpet in a school band in elementary school. And there came a point where it was like, uh, oh, none of the music that I'm listening to and enjoying has a trumpet in it. And I think specific at point two, um, ACDC black back in black uh and I was like I need to learn how to play this song um so I started learning guitar and learned that song and many others and there's a lot of classic rock influence in in my style there definitely is and you picked a a pretty good song to start learning because I mean you didn't go crazy with like I want you know something by I don't know, Ingve Malmsteen or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's funny you say that about playing trumpet and you ended up on guitar because my first ever band, everybody but me was in their high school band. And then they, mm. they, they migrated to different instruments. I mean, the drummer was, you know, part of the drum court, the drums, but he drum, you know, he went to his drum set. Whereas the guitar lead guitar player was the trumpet player. 
they're pretty and analogous, so, I think. Yeah, and I've I've been learning that over the years. How, I mean, granted, you you learn like your music theory and and the importance of practicing and and being able to um, sync up with other members, you know, pretty quick, and all that. But more than once, I've had a trumpet player become a, a guitar player on the channel, and it's always surprising to me how that's just I'm, <laughs> what I really want to do is play guitar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? So cool. It's tiring on the lips. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So with that, um, I wanted to talk more about uh, DI Records actually a little bit. The uh, Philadelphia based record labels have given me tons of content. Stay tuned. You're going to see so many uh, virtual interviews and even a couple uh, in person ones for some bands that are in town. But thank you. Shout out to Dakota from DI Records. But one thing I've noticed, and I, Genevieve, this is mostly for you. I have noticed a lot of female fronted, you know, bands on the label, which great. But so many of the females fronting these bands have like blue hair or red hair. Like <laughs> it's obviously colored hair out of a box, you know, it's not yeah. natural. And I was wondering, are you getting coaching on this or something? <laughs> so it's so funny that you say that actually. There are um there's only so much you can do as an alternative artist. We're not getting coaching on it and certainly not from DI records, but I am one of like the music scene in Denver is pretty closely knit. And I can think of three, four other bands off the top of my head where the lead singer has long red hair and bangs, which feels very specific. So <laughs> unless you want to do something really extreme, I think honestly, it's just part of the scene that it, we're trying to differentiate ourselves and in the process we're all coming out looking the same <laughs> yeah i mean hey, what is it uh i am a we're all unique or something like that yeah just but, like everybody else you're all different yes we are all different i'm not <laughs> i just thought it was funny because i i interviewed um Litsa torres from lilium dust right after i had interviewed um was it moonshine jasmine I think it was me saying, but, but literally back to back blue hair. Yeah. Oh, Long. Yeah. And, and I was like, what is going on? And I was like, <laughs> well, I got red now at least. <laughs> I think if, if you look historically at female fronted acts, one, there have never been as many as there right. are male fronted acts. And two, you know, how many different hair colors are there, right? Like how many bands are there where the dude has black hair? And they're not getting asked this question, right? <laughs> oh, I've asked that question before. <laughs> when when they make the mistake of posting childhood photos and they had like spiky blonde hair and now they're rocking jet black long hair. It's like, what happened? Who hurt every, you? Yep. <laughs> every Swedish metal band, it's like you hit the teenage years and suddenly the box die comes out and uh, here we all are. <laughs> it's just an extension of my dark soul. <laughs> Exactly. exactly such a form of self-expression just that outward appearance and here's something especially on a stage I think yeah. it really translates bit of trivia for you room sixers this is all natural so oh <laughs> oh no, god it it, it it happens quick enjoy what you have <laughs> um so anyway so from there i wanted to ask now you didn't, was the band formed in Denver or was it formed somewhere else? I thought I remember seeing something. Uh, so we're, we all found each other in Denver. Um, yeah, our basis is originally from Chicago um, and moved here probably 14 or 15 years ago. But we've all come together here and that's where we've mostly been kind of building that following. Um, and primarily playing right on I uh I, I just I thought I had remembered seeing something where you started in another town or city and and all decided we're going to Denver to make it so never mind um no. all right so from there I'm gonna take we're gonna take a quick little break because it's time to hear a message from future Josh and now a word from our sponsors thanks Josh from the past if you're like me your free time comes at a high price once you factor in work, family, friends, and unexpected plans, it can be hard to find some me time for yourself. That's where video games come in. But what to play? Well, just like me, 
you might have commitment issues when it comes to buying video games. Good news! Gamefly is here to beat your personal time boss levels. Gamefly is the leading online video game rental service in the United States. They deliver the widest selection and availability of games for all the major consoles. Some of the benefits of membership include value. Memberships start for as low as $9.50. Selection. Gamefly has the largest selection of video games anywhere with thousands of titles including all the new releases and classics. Convenience. Gamefly delivers games to your door. Shipping is free both ways and there are no late fees. Savings. Gamefly members get free shipping on products such as controllers, accessories, and collectibles. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time only, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to save even more money by checking out their pre-played game sale. You'll get the convenience of services like Netflix designed for busy gamers like you and me. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Gamefly for being a sponsor, and let's get back to today's video. We're back, and if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please consider using the link down in the description. It'll help you out, help me out, win-win, everybody gets something. Um, I It was brought to my attention off-camera that I uh, misspoke. DI Records is based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, not Philadelphia. I am so sorry, Dakota. I am so sorry to the entire city of Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> or Pittsburgh, for that matter. So, um, Just cover the state, be safe. Yeah, the yes, whole state. I'm so sorry. Uh, nobody should live it. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to go there, but um so cool for those of you just joining us what are you doing jumping in the middle of a video we've got genevieve and max from the unsolved and also another thing i was remiss in, in uh, saying if you want to be like them you want to be featured on the channel whether reviewed interviewed or both hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the room six social media link that's where you will find all the things i'm up to online ways you can support the channel should you so choose you can pick up some merch at room shop uh and what else oh yeah while you're down there feel free to like share and subscribe thanks back to you two okay a couple more questions and then we'll get to a music video which again i was remiss in talking about man i'm just batting <laughs> a thousand uh we're gonna see a music video for uh do, you, do we know what song we're gonna do so um probably that performance of strike the match yeah let's send him be... the live one seems appropriate yeah, all right, cool. So we'll see a live, well, a music video of a live performance of Strike the Match, which I have will also be reviewing in a separate video later on in the week. So uh, stick around for that. Now then, Max, yeah. what, at a show, what are you normally rocking on stage, uh, gear-wise? Yeah, great question. Uh, I've got quite a library of guitars, some of which are visible behind um i primarily play actually over here on genevieve's left got this prs custom 24 um that i really love with the tremolo that, those double humbuckers it's a great really great guitar plays so clean i mean i'm usually adding distortion but it, it plays really nicely and then i've got um a marshall triple super lead um, in a half stack, the four by 10 cab, uh, which is pretty overpowered, but it really helps get that kind of vintage, uh, English rock and roll sound that I, I just really love. And it uh, looks so cool. That's true. There's something to be said cool. for just a Marshall stack behind you. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, I have a, a, uh, I have a four cab and, uh, a lead MOSFET 100, uh, amp, which is basically kind of a vintage amp. And it, of course, I've got problems with it. <laughs> the, the sound cuts in and out, and blah blah blah. But yeah. that, when it when it works, the tone it is works, just like it's yeah. Like, mm, there's this thing, and uh, it's been a while since I touched it. I'm I'm sad to say because this, but uh, yeah. But I was going to ask you: Are those all your guitars? Uh, this Gretsch directly behind Genevieve is mm -hmm. hers. Yeah. Ooh. Um, and then you can just see the edge of there's a Jackson bass just on my right, which is also Genevieve's. Yeah, there's a viola off camera too. I, <laughs> it's best though if, for everybody if I just focus on singing. Yeah. I know the feeling. I, I, I studied voice and as, as a front man, it was a real conversation with myself to start a three piece where I played guitar and sang and did all the guitar. And oh, wow. uh, 
I, I ended up liking, you know, I was happy generally with what, what came out, but you know, you really gotta be like, I'm just a singer who happens to play some instruments. You know I mean? Yeah. yeah. I am not a drummer. Yeah. I am not right. a drummer. I am not a pianist. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a bass on the wall that I, you know, I've touched a few times, but yeah, <laughs> I, I have a line of merch, uh, in my store that is, it, I purposely made for me. It says make music, not excuses. And yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard sometimes to remember like, Hey, turn around, stupid. Go touch. It's like touch grass, go touch strings, go touch something. Yeah. It yep. is some of the best therapy out there. And, you know, in order to kind of make this project happen, there was a long period of time where I was honestly calling my myself a musician before I was really making music consistently. I was writing a lot and I was doing the songwriter thing and picking it out on guitar and piano and MIDI controllers and all of that. And it was like, I'm a musician that doesn't make enough music. And then you know, I sort of had to fake it till I made it in a way, I guess. And then found these amazing collaborators and Outsource. here we all are actually. Music parts. Yeah. Now I don't have to worry about so much. <laughs> so I feel like this is a safe bet to say this, but you you guys know who Sting is. Yeah. Yes, sir. The police. Yes. Yeah. I've been interviewing some young bands lately. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> We were talking about CDs earlier. Did we age ourselves too much? I don't know. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> so, um, the reason I say that is Sting had a quote that I really followed when it became when I was like, okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do a band, and I'm gonna be the front guy, and I'm gonna play guitar, and and we're gonna be three piece, and and I'm not gonna rely, I'm not gonna have that crutch of someone else playing lead, and I'll just play rhythm, and mm -hmm. um, which really was how it felt because I I I front I was the uh, front man. And a rhythm guitar player for a, a cover band for seven years, where it started as a seven piece and eventually became a four piece because bands, it was the best name ever, Revolving Door. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. We had, we went through you like seven. yourself up for success there. <laughs> well, we went through like seven drummers and ended up back at number two and four keyboardists and ended up with no keyboardists and the bass player, who's playing bass this time? And, and, uh, but when I decided, I, I, I really had this quote from Sting in my head. And I, I think, Genevieve, you embodied that as well. He said, I've made a career out of surrounding myself with people better than I am. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you brought up Sting, who is a great musician, but honestly might be the third most talented guy in that band after Andy Summers and Stuart quite, Copeland. I mean, for quite sure. frankly. But um, the thing with Sting is, anytime I've ever seen or heard him perform anything, I'm just like, why am I not practicing right now? Yeah. You know, uh, and uh, I, I've said this before on this channel, Dolly Parton. Oh. The woman plays nine instruments in a two and a half hour show with no breaks. I mean, just goes. So anyway, I digress. We're, 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 we're way off the, the, the topic here. <laughs> I what can was talk the about question? Dolly Parton all day. <laughs> yeah, I know. What was the question? What was my question? Uh, Instruments. That's right. Gear. That's now, gear. Genevieve, yeah. at a show, you're just singing, right? Yep. Now, are you are you generally you got your own microphone and your own PA and everything, or are you just yeah. go with whatever they offer? Yeah, we. Uh, Max actually got me a wireless Sennheiser microphone, which is just like a dream come true. Because I, you know, we talk about the glam aspect of our band, and so much of that is wrapped up in performance. These really fun, fun live shows. That's what we're trying to do. So there's a lot of movement, walking around. Um, again, like my inspiration is Shirley Manson. She's all over that stage. So I wanted, I wanted to do that. So yeah, I'm rocking a Sennheiser microphone. We, we just built an in-ear monitor rack last summer, um, which we've gotten to take out and has really made a huge difference in our show. Max is wireless too. So he's walking out into the audience and we are very, very interactive and our gear allows us to do that. And see, you can always tell when a band is having fun on stage and it just makes you enjoy them even more. Mm -hmm. And when you're confident in your gear, but also when you're able to break the fourth wall like you do, or, or even just creating motion on stage and you're not just trapped behind your pedals, you know, mm -hmm. or, or you're, you know, standing there with a straight up and down microphone stand and trying to figure out what to do with your hands. When you're not doing <laughs> that, it, it, it does lend something to the experience. So good on you. 
for figuring that out and making it happen. Um, yeah, in my opinion, you know, the thing that's separating the the reason people go to a live show is for the live aspect. It is a visual experience as much as it is an auditory one. So we want to bring it. Otherwise, they just listen to the recording at home. What are they doing out on a Friday night if they're not going to see something awesome? Right. Yeah, agree. Um, one of the things I do with the channel is uh, here in town, we have uh, songwriter showcases that happen every week at a really cool spot. And I live stream that. I also do a review video of it later, but I live stream that show. And so for the people that can't make it, it's funny because when I do the live streams, during the live stream, it's like maybe a quarter of what the overall views of the live stream end up being. So I'm live streaming for people in the future. <laughs> it's really <laughs> weird. Like, wh why wouldn't you know, you know when it is? But whatever. I don't, but I digress. Let's do yeah. a lot of that in this one. So we're having fun. <laughs> um, speaking of which, if you want to know more about the Unsolved and what they're up to, I will have links down in the description. So make sure you check those out for, you know, their, their various social media stuff. And also uh, a link to the um, the purchase link for Strike the Match. Thank you. No worries. Now then, what is your favorite show memory performing as the Unsolved? And it could be one where things went way off the rails or you checked off a lot of rock star wish list things or someone went to jail, whatever. Do you have a memory where you pull that out when, when you want to like, you know, you want to tell somebody at a party, or, you know, like, oh, I can't this one time. What do you got? Do you mind if I take this one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were at this great venue in Denver called Your Mom's House, which is just a 10 out of 10 venue name anyway. Yeah. Uh, we, we were doing this show and our drummer had been working on a drum solo for a long time, which is one of those things that I think drummers get so excited for. And everybody else is kind of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I was like, all right, whatever, like indulge the drummer. Well, it was very fun. He ran into this, like, it was like a two minute drum solo in the middle of a song. And I actually went out into the audience and started headbanging. And I get back up on stage and I was like, that's Connor, who unfortunately, you know, talk about the revolving door. He's no longer a part of the band, um, left on very good terms, still a good friend, but this was too much fun. He pulled off this great solo and I got back up on stage and I was like, this is Connor. If anybody just wants to fire a panty up on stage at him, we would love that kind of attention. <laughs> and the hugest pair of boxers I have ever seen flies past my face and lands on one of his symbols. These like enormous oh. <laughs> boxers. That's pretty good size. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I was like, oh, now we know who our audience is. It's not necessarily like tiny bethonged women. It's uh it's really Dude some scanty bloody. dudes. Connor, you dog. Yeah. I know. I was like, oh, yeah, were they are still hanging in his basement? <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, were they white? No, they were like navy blue. Thank God. I yeah. I'm glad. I'm I didn't want to know what was on them, you know. Yeah, I was just gonna say how clean were they? But um, you like to imagine they were taken fresh out of the package for a bit, but mm -hmm. no, you have no way of knowing. <laughs> yeah, I never quite understood that, like throwing your bra on stage or something. I'm like, what is he going to do with it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or she? Like but, give it to the roadie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like start a collection. Yeah. Anyway, essentially, uh, and those are expensive. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what woman has can afford to just throw abroad an artist these days not in this economy <laughs> is, is that la perla <laughs> <laughs> all right max do you have a favorite show memory um let's see i have a pretty good one of uh one of our more recent shows i decided like i'm gonna take advantage of this wireless the stage is not that high off the ground so i'm gonna just try to hop off and just walk out into the crowd for this guitar solo where I don't need any pedals. I've got, got some freedom for a second. Um, and so I did, and I get out there and pretty much everybody kind of takes a step back. <laughs> you know, like, You're invading our space. And I was like, yeah, I am. Except for this one guy who was standing right kind of front and center and he was just into it. And I just walked right up to him and just <laughs> rocked out directly, just like making eye contact. He was so into it. I really appreciate it. It's just kind of... He knew what was going on and he was there for it. 
Connor and Max day. getting that man love. Truly. <laughs> yeah. Those nice. are going to make me jealous. I know, right? <laughs> All right. Um, so we're on to uh, we're on to the last question. You made it. Yay. And then we're going to check out the uh, music video of the live performance of Strike the Match. And then we'll catch you in the outro. But last question. We're circling back. And you OG Room Sixers, you know what's coming. So I ask this of all my prey. Um, circling back to that first question of your earliest musical influence. Okay. Uh, what is one thing you wish you could go back and tell yourself that, hey, you're going to need to know this. And don't say change your strings, Max. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if you could go back in time and tell you something, you're going to have to know this. I... I would say I didn't really expect um, – I guess it comes down to crowd work in a small space. And it was our first show that was really small. We were playing in a club to about 30 people. And I was talking to a couple other friends there that are also musicians out on the scene. And I was like, well – I guess I just have to go up there and do it like it's a stadium, which has kind of been my mentality from the first show. We we play, you know, kind of moderately sized clubs. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm just going to go do it like a, a stadium. <laughs> and they both looked at me like, what do you mean? Like small venue, you tone it down. And I was like, oh, no, I don't think that's that's for us at all. So I did. And I went up and worked the crowd like it was any other show. Um, and I think the thing I would probably go back and tell myself is expect to hear things that you don't agree with and trust that you know what you're doing because it worked really well and everybody had a really good time. We made some really good contacts from that show. We made $25, which didn't even cover the bar tab, but, <laughs> um, you know, we have to do it for the love of the game. And, and there's always going to be this conversation happening where, People expect you to be more self-conscious than you actually are. And that's just not for us. We're going to do it. We're going to do it like a uh, spinal tap, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's well said. Yeah. About Maximilian? You? Yeah. I, um, for me, it would, it would be also about kind of what the performance aspect is. I've been playing guitar for oh, 20 years. Um, and started really young and I'm good at practicing guitar just in my own space, just sitting, getting really technically proficient. And I, um, never really worked on a performance aspect until we formed this band and, um, learning how to demp show how much fun I'm actually having, um, it very initially would just stand up there be kind of like stiff and just like oh, i'm really focused on playing this just right um and it's it's just so much more fun and it's so much more engaging to the audience to just have a great time um so practicing like you play was would be my advice to myself start on that earlier i couldn't say it any better um those are both like very huge key pieces of advice um, and, and honestly, if you're watching this and you're a new musician at all, or you're just wondering like, how can I, you know, change my game a little bit, use those pieces of advice. Um, so with that, I want to say thank you very much to Genevieve and Max from the Unsolved for coming on the channel. I want to say thank you for watching. Stick around. We're going to watch that music video for Strike the Match, and then we'll see you in the outro. So in the meantime, I guess, uh, temporarily say goodbye guys. Okay. Thank you so much, Josh. Thanks for having us. See you in a bit.
I want to thank the Unsolved for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. They have a lot more in store, and I believe they're working on something new. Is that right? Yeah. Um, in the next couple of months, we have a new single coming out for a song called Fall. So please keep your ears open. Um, we'll send it your way when we have it all done. Awesome. In the meantime, if you want to know more about them, hit those social media links down in the description. And if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, click up there. You know the drill, wherever it is. And if you want to, <laughs> you want to hear my own music, click over there. Remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. Thank Thanks. you. Goodbye. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -bum. Ha, ha, ha.